How's it going everybody? My name is Foxide and today I'm bringing you a tips, tricks, and general starting guide video on Saren Fate. Saren Fate is a new magical RPG style game that reminds me a lot of Rune Factory, Stardew Valley, things like that. It's a very unique game. I highly recommend checking it out. As always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to help out the channel and leave a comment at the end of the video as well. But Let's jump right into it. So, our first tip has to do with your beginning character. Uh, I'm gonna go through these tips in order, uh, in the order that you are going to encounter them when you're starting a new file. Um, and then at the end, we'll go over some general tips and tricks that are gonna help you throughout your gameplay. So, first things first, character customization. When you get into the game, you have your, you know, your generic, RPG character customization. You can change all sorts of stuff. It looks great and you get to pick, more importantly, your race. Saren Fate does not explain this to you in the beginning, but your starting race has its own passive buff on the character. So there are three races. There's Human, Saren, and Val. If you start out as a human, your buying and selling prices are in or decreased and increased respectively. I had to think about that. So basically, whenever you sell something to a shop, you're getting more money. Whenever you buy something from a shop, you're spending less money. The next race is the Saren. The Saren race has a passively regenerating mana pool. So over time, you're regenerating mana um, instead of just restoring it through food or potions or, or whatever um, you're, you're also restoring it passively and your starting mana pool is larger so you have more mana to begin with the last race the Val has a higher base HP stat so you have higher health to begin with and more importantly you never fail to smelt ore. Normally in the game, you have a chance to fail when smelting ore and it'll give you ash instead of the ore bar. Um, but with the Val race, you don't have that. You are always going to smelt ore. This does not apply to crumbles though, like copper crumble, iron crumble, etc. Those will still have a chance to fail, but the ore itself does not. So moving on to our next tip. Our next starting guide tip is gonna bring you right here at the beginning you have a choice of either a staff or a dagger slash sword depending on which one you go for is going to depend on how you prefer to play combat style and different games also whenever you pick the staff you get an intelligence buff so you get more points starting out in your intelligence stat if you pick the sword you get more starting points in dexterity and combat from what I've been able to find, the points that you get from the staff are more substantial than the points that you get from the sword um, as far as the stats go. So um, off the top of my head, I think you get 20 points in intelligence if you start with the staff, but if you start with the sword, you get like 13 points in dexterity um, and a couple more points in combat as well which I think is is a lower buff like you get less points in those two stats overall than you do in intelligence from what I've I've been able to see if that's wrong let me know but that's what I've been I, that's what I've found so far um, the sword obviously is melee the magic wand is obviously ranged um, I prefer to go with the staff because in this game you're using a lot of mana for things like spells, resource gathering, things like that. So you're going to be raising your intelligence so that you can get a higher mana pool. And while you're raising your intelligence, if you go with the staff, you're going to be increasing um, the damage that you do effectively with the staff. So I personally think the staff is a better choice, but ultimately it depends on how you prefer to play the game your way. And this is going to lead us into our next tip, which is 
literally collect everything. Interact with everything you possibly can. You never know when you're gonna find a secret, a hidden item. You never know when you're gonna, you know, talk to an NPC and get a side quest, things like that. Um, right here at the beginning, you can interact with these pots and you get some starting money right off the bat, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's super helpful this early on. So, moving on to the next part of this tip. Okay, our next tip is going to be the first area they throw you in on your way to, you know, basically the introduction to the whole storyline and everything else. It's called the Royal Road, and I recommend collecting everything you can find here. So, they'll explain this later on in the game, but you can press spacebar to attack. And if you attack a flower or a piece of stone three times before you collect it, there's a chance to get dust or fairy dust from a flower or runes from a piece of stone. So, let's hit it three times, pressing the space bar, collect it, and we got dust. So we're gonna do it for this one as well. And we got more dust. Highly recommend doing that. Dust, fairy dust, all of that, super helpful. Runes especially are incredibly helpful as well. Looks like that didn't work for those rocks, but it will work for some rocks, so. Um, the next part of this tip is while you're on the royal road, you can press spacebar, like I'm doing here, to attack the creatures um, on the route and get early game experience and items which are going to be super helpful here in just a little bit. Three, and collect. And that's how we do that. This road is also going to lead us into our next tip, I believe. Oh, no, they've all flown away. Whenever you encounter crows on a tree, which are like the little black little bird things you saw earlier, scare them off all the time. Whenever you scare off a crow, there's a chance for them to drop items or even equipment, which is extremely helpful early on. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you crafting materials. It's going to give you such a big boost. I highly recommend anytime you see a crow on a tree, scare it off. It doesn't take any energy or anything whatsoever, and you can get potentially free items out of it. 100% recommend. And this is going to take us into our next tip. Okay, so our next tip is going to be in this part of the tutorial. In this tutorial, you talk to this bird guy, and one of the first item, or the first item he gives you, is the key item, the witchery decks. As soon as you get this, it's going to allow you to start recording the new items that you're collecting. So anytime you get a new item, you click on it, and this little book is going to pop up. Every time you hit this book, you're going to get this pop up. New materials found. But sometimes when you hit this book, it's going to say new recipes found, which we're not getting any luck here. I think it happens with the puddles though. See, there we go. New recipe found. Every time you record something new in your book, you get experience, you learn more about the item. Um, what can be craft from it, etc., as well as um, a list of new recipes for it. So, anytime you get a new item, unless it's rare, record it in your book. The reason I say unless it's rare is because there are some items in the game which are significantly harder to get. The number one thing I can think of right now are statues. Sometimes when you kill a monster, it will drop a statue, and they are a very, very rare drop from what I've been able to find. Um, they're worth a lot of money. I don't know the uses for them individually yet, but they're very hard to get. So if you put it in your book, of course you're going to unlock, um, you know, whatever corresponds with that statue, whether it be a recipe or just general information, lots of experience, whatever, but you're going to lose that statue. And if you need it again in the future for something, you're going to have to grind for it. So I personally recommend not learning rare items until you have duplicates of them. Um, 
anytime you learn something in the book, the item is consumed. Um, I should have led with that, I guess, but anytime you learn it, it's consumed. So if it's a, if it's a common item that you're going to be able to get again, 100%, throw it in the book, get that experience. But if it's rare, hold on to it until you get a duplicate. Okay, our next tip slash guide is going to lead us into your starting element. When you're talking to the mirror in your new house, he's going to ask you, what is your runic attunement? How are you feeling? One of five questions are going to pop up just like this. Like a sapling, electric, bright and radiant, luminous, or dark and mysterious. So each of these corresponds with its own element. If you choose like a sapling, that is the nature element. The nature element, as well as the other elements, all give you a passive buff um, that's going to increase your gameplay in various ways. Your runic attunement that I've been able to find is not able to be changed later on in the game. Whatever you choose here is what your runic attunement is. It's going to affect things like the damage you take. Um, the damage you give out, things like that, because, you know, just like games where it's like, like Pokemon, for example, fire beats water, etc. That same concept applies here. Um, so that's going to affect you in battle, um, but it's also going to give you a nice little buff. So if you start out with nature, you get a 20% boost to experience from all sources. Also, Seeds grow faster and plants grow larger. So if you're looking for a gardening play style where you're going to be growing a lot of plants, you're going to be gathering a lot of resources, I recommend the nature path. You're getting more experience from everything you're doing and whenever you're planting, your plants are growing faster, your plants are growing larger, you're getting a lot more out of it. So if you want to garden, I recommend going the nature path. The next path is the electric path. If you choose to be attuned with electricity, that's um, that's what the that's what the rune is is electric. Um, you get 20% increased damage. Also, you have a chance to smite attackers. So while you're attacking in combat, there's a chance for a lightning strike to occur and uh, attack nearby enemies. Also, on top of that, which is I think the best part of this specific rune, nearby soil becomes wet or watered. So instead of having to lug around a watering can or what have you, or take up that extra inventory space for it, you can just have the electric attunement, walk around near your plants, and they're automatically watered. So this is also a good rune to use for um, gardening as well as the um the ex exploring for combat and stuff i personally prefer electric over all of the other um all of the other runic attunements just because of this buff i don't have to worry about watering my stuff and whenever i am out in the wild exploring i don't have to worry as much about dealing enough damage to creatures because i've got that damage buff the next one is bright and radiant bright and radiant is the sun element if you choose the sun element, your mining and woodcutting spells are 40% more powerful, which is a huge buff for gathering wood and stone. And it gives you a rank of heat proof. There are three possible ranks of heat proof, which you'll see in your skill tree. And if you choose the sun element, you get an automatic one of three. Luminous is the moon element. If you choose the moon element, you're gonna find more chimera spawns you'll have a glow at night so you'll you'll have a, your own light source while you're walking around at night and all monsters that are considered moon monsters so all the monsters that spawn at night will not outright attack you um, the number one example of this that I can think of are the um, I believe the skeletons in the forest that you first run into I think those are considered moon monsters. So the last one is dark and mysterious. This is the void element. If you choose the void element, you're going to get extra HP 
and MP or mana drops from monsters to restore, you know, your mana and health every time you defeat something. You get 10% runic resistance, which is super helpful defensively. And you give an addition, you get, sorry, an additional 100% mana link. Um, I've not been able to find a lot of information about this. I've tried messing around with it a little bit and I wasn't able to really find out what exactly that means um, as far as gameplay wise. Uh, I do know that mana linking is helpful for chimera capture as well as resource, ga resource gathering. So it could be very helpful as well. Um, but check it out, play around with them, see which one fits you best. I personally enjoy the electric the most, but I have seen people going with void uh, because of the mana link buff as well as the self healing from the extra MP and HP drops and the runic resistance. So those are your options. And when you choose these options, you're going to get a different selection of starting Chimera, but we'll get into that later. Okay. Before we head on to the next tip, I want to go back over the tip we just discussed and go over the void element. So on the void element, as you can see here, 100% base link, base mana link power. So they've, they've changed some things up. They're coming out with updates rapid fire here. So the update on this is that your base mana link power is basically doubled now. So you're gathering resources faster. You're basically, it's more effective anytime you mana link something, which since you mana link for a lot of things, very helpful ability. I don't know if that's going to increase the amount of mana you're using or if it's doubling the effectiveness while using the same amount. I, I would assume it's the latter. Um, I haven't tested it though, so, but that that's one of the abilities. Also, it looks like they've added partial void sickness immunity. So a debuff in the game, void sickness, you've got partial immunity to that, could be extremely helpful as well. And then of course you see there the 10% to the runic resistances, but the, that is the, uh, the, the void that I wanted to go into a little more detail for you. So let's move on to uh, the next tip here. So your next tip is when you get to this point in the game, which is very, very quickly after you select your runic attunement, Coco is going to appear in your house and she's going to ask you a couple questions. She's going to say, what interests you most as a new witch? She's going to give you six options. So when you're starting this, you're probably like, that is a lot at once. There's no information. There's no like confirmation of, are you sure? It's just, you select it and you get it and that's it. So whatever you pick, you're kind of locked into for the game. Luckily, a lot of these things are things you can get naturally. So whichever one you pick, she's going to give you a starting item to help you out early on in your adventures. So to begin with gathering, if you select gathering, she's going to give you a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass shows little sparkles around on the ground and stuff for hidden items. So helpful so nice to have that extra item gathering ability. It can be, as far as I have been able to tell, it can be all sorts of stuff from um, things that increase your max HP to resources to gold, things like that, like huge benefit. So that's what you get for gathering is the magnifying glass. Again, appears as little sparkles, click on the sparkles, you get the item. Next up is witchery. Let's hover over that, here we go. So if you choose witchery, she's gonna give you a mana pebble. The mana pebble, has a passive effect where sometimes whenever you cast a spell, your spells will regenerate one mana. That's very helpful. Um, we're doing a playthrough on this right now and we have the mana pebble. I highly recommend getting the mana pebble as soon as you can. Uh, it's, it's been very helpful for me. It's an easy way of me constantly getting mana back that I don't have to keep wandering around trying to replenish. So. Witchery gives you the mana pebble, regenerates your mana sometimes on spell casts by one. The next one up is gardening. If you choose gardening, she's gonna give you something called the magic watering can. The magic watering can is an item that when equipped, it acts a lot like the electric runic buff. Anytime you walk over dry soil, it will automatically water that soil. And it's a watering can that never needs refilled. So every time you have it equipped, this effect is active. It's a lot like the electric buff, but it takes up an accessory slot um, in your inventory. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of planting and stuff and you 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 don't wanna take up that extra inventory space, like I said, go with the electric runic attunement. It's very helpful. 
but um, the watering can does the same thing. So it's kind of it's kind of whichever you prefer, however you're gonna play, etc. But moving on to the next one, Chimera. If you tell her that you are interested more in the Chimera aspect of Seren Fate, which is super fun, by the way, the Chimera are super cute. I love them so much. I hope they add a feature where they evolve kind of like Pokemon later on. But anyhow, back on track here. If you choose Chimera, she's gonna give you a magic stone. Um, I think it's called a lucky stone or something along those lines. Basically, Chimera spells are increased chance of success. So anytime you capture a Chimera, it has a significant chance of increasing the chance of capturing that monster. It's been very beneficial for me. I use it in our playthrough. Um, I like it a lot and I haven't been able to find a recipe to craft it myself. So as of me recording this currently, this is the only way I know of, of getting that stone. This could change in the near future as they're coming out with updates pretty quick. Um, or I may just not have unlocked the recipe. So, but that's how you, that's how you get the stone. Uh, to my knowledge, which increases the chance of capturing Chimera. The next one is fishing. If you select fishing, she's going to give you something called the fishing net. The fishing net has a greater chance to get bait from fishing. So after you get the fishing rod, you start fishing, you know, you're having a good time. Uh, if you have the fishing net equipped, you have a better chance of getting bait while you're fishing, which is helpful, obviously, for catching actual fish. So <laughs> if you're into fishing, you like that scene, definitely go the fishing net route. And the last one here is mining. She gives you a magnet, which is a chance to pull crumbles from ore nodes. So when you're, you know, mining or harvesting copper nodes, iron nodes, things like that, and you have the magnet equipped, you have a chance of getting crumbles from those nodes. All of these items can be crafted in game other than the Chimera Stone from what I know. So I would recommend choosing whichever one you think is gonna benefit you most early on, and then you can craft the other ones later. Um, the gathering magnifying glass is huge. What an early game buff, but it's so easy to craft. It's literally twig and glass. Two of the easy twigs can be found. Glass can be made, sand in a furnace, just like Minecraft. So easy to get. So I would recommend getting something that's either going to be difficult for you to craft or something that's going to benefit you more early on. But these are the six choices you get. Those are the items to give you. Let's move on to the next part. All right, for our next tip, we're gonna go over the chimeras that you're gonna be given, depending on your element that you choose when you talk to the mirror. So when you choose the nature element, you get one of these three choices. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select each one. I'm gonna have to start a new game for each of these. So there'll be quite a few cuts but I'm going to select each one and um, look at them in my inventory. That way you can look at their stats and whatnot individually to make your initial choice. They're not super important on which one you select first because um, you can catch a lot of Chimera in the wild. But so that you can make the best choice that fits you, I'm going to go ahead and hover over all of the important details um, of each individual creature. So. Let's go ahead and start with the little mushroom guy. Let's capture him real quick. And she's gonna be like, yay, good job. It looks like a pill. <laughs> it's an interesting take on, on monster capture for sure. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. It's a Sporsa. Okay. Uh, I would not like to hear more about the Chimera. Okay, so in your inventory, after you get the Chimera, make sure you equip it. It goes right here. That's where the little pill guy goes. When you do that, he'll follow you around. So make sure you do that. That way you can actually use him. But the Sporsa looks like this. This, this is our, our starting stats. This is its base cell price, one pearl, 150 copper. Um, I don't know what this little symbol means, but that's... That's what its little symbol is. <laughs> uh, here are its moves. And his ability. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, here is the next one in that uh, line. It's called Batra, the little mouse looking thing. So he's got this blue symbol 
These are starting costs here, 202 copper and one pearl. Here's his ability. And here are his skills. And let's move on to the next one. Okay. And here's the next one called a Nanta. And here are his uh, selling prices, 202 copper, uh, one pearl. Here's his little symbol. And there's his ability. And there's his skill. It's a pretty good skill. 40 power. Whenever we are, um, whenever you're choosing your starting chimera, it's recommended you choose something that has a very high power. Um, obviously the higher the power, the higher the AP cost, but um, it just kind of depends on how, how you want to play as well or what you want it to look like because some of them are just cuter than others. This thing is definitely not that cute <laughs> in my opinion. It's some kind of weird bug. Anyhow, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so your next element is electricity. When you start out with electric rune attunement, these are your three starter choices. So, your first option for your electric partners is this guy. Static cute, and he is kind of cute, it's like a little ladybug thing. Doesn't have an ability by the looks of it because there's no little blue diamond here, so that's kind of unfortunate. But here's his ability, 60 power. Dang, so he's strong. His sell price is pretty low though. Um, he's got pretty high attunement here, 790, uh, but he doesn't have an ability. So, but here's his, uh, here's his, here's his uh, a move, his ability. He doesn't have a, what am I trying to say here? He doesn't have an ability, but he has a move. Okay. I'm having trouble Englishing today. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty. And our next one here is this guy called a naughty nut <laughs> okay sure uh, here's his ability and here's his move all right on to the next one all right and our last chimera available for the electric starting runic attunement is slurchin which is what we started with in our let's play so Check that out if you haven't already, by the way. Um, he does not look like he has an ability, which is strange because ours and our playthrough definitely has an ability. So I'm thinking that the abilities are randomized. So some of them have them, some of them don't. Ours also has a different set of skills. So here's this one's skills. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, even though it looks like things are pretty randomized, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the rest of the available Chimera per rune attunement because I want you guys to be able to at least see what your options are um, instead of having to, you know, just guess and pick. So let's move on to the next one. All right. So these are your Chimera options for the Sun Attunement. Also, I'm noticing that some of the information I said earlier about the passive buffs for each of the Runic Attunements may be a little bit off. Keep in mind, um, they're rapid firing updates on this literally while i'm recording this there's been three minor updates uh just while recording so some things may change very quickly over time uh one of the things for the sun element that has recently or not recently but i noticed has changed is that it's plus 50 percent to mining and wood cutting spells you still get the uh heat proof and also you can set enemies ablaze sometimes. So minor changes here and there, um, just test it out. See which ones might be fitting for you. Um, the 
the the stuff I mentioned was still was still true as far as all of the other information but they're making some minor tweaks to them here and there that make some more beneficial than others etc etc so keep that in mind when you're selecting but let's go ahead and see what we're gonna get Alrighty, our first chimera for the sun attunement is Caterpoke, which is this adorable little cactus and a plant that walks around. Um, this one doesn't have an ability, but like I said before, these seem to be randomized because our starting chimera in our let's play has an ability, but the one we just looked at before did not. So more research needs done on that, but as far as I know, it could possibly be randomized um he's are here are his abilities that he's got which may also be randomized and let's move on to the next one okay and here's our next chimera for the sun attunement the owl glitz this one has an ability pretty interesting ability and here's its moves. And let's move on to the next one. And finally, the last chimera we have for the sun attunement is the Kipling, which is this cute little frog thing. No ability, but here's its move. Kind of interesting. Super cute. Love this thing. Super adorable. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to what was the next attunement? Uh, I believe it was moon. So All right, <clears throat> so starting with the moon runic attunement, these are your three starting chimera choices You got a plant thing a spider thing a little moth thing. So we're gonna see what each of these are real quick All right, so it looks like the first Chimera for our moon attunement is called a crown dole. It's the little plant thing that we saw. It does have an ability. And here's its move. Alrighty. Let's check out what the other ones are, shall we? The next chimera that we've got for the moon runic attunement is Vengar. It's a little spider dude. No ability. Pretty decent attunement here. And here's his move. Let's see what the next one is. And the last of our Chimera for the moon attunement is Starwee. It's a pretty little moth creature. No ability. Here's its move. Here are its other stats. We've got one more element and then we're gonna get into the tricksy tricksy part of the video so let's move on to void okay so when you start out with the void attunement these are your three chimera they're the exact same thing they are all different colors um so <laughs> i'm gonna assume they're different somehow obviously so Let's check them out. All right, so the first one in the lineup is called Gemage. No ability, void element, and here's his move. Not very strong. So this is the first one. This is a blue one. So let's move on to the next one. Okie dokie. The next one in the lineup is another Jimage. No ability again. And here's his move. I wonder what the next one will be. And finally, the last Chimera for the last element is a Jimage. This one does have an ability. Pretty decent attunement too. And his move is not good. <laughs> but our last Chimera is this Jimage here. 
Use your ability and moves. You see, last Chimera for the last element. As I was saying before my mic got muted, the game is super customizable when it comes to starting out. Your stats even seem to be randomized um, per character because I was noticing as I was starting over for the different files that the, um, the stats here were different each time. It didn't matter if I picked a sword or a staff. Obviously, if I picked a sword, it leaned more towards dexterity and combat. But when I picked and, oh, and I picked the staff, it led more towards intelligence. However, I'm noticing that even when I'm only picking the sword, the stats are still pretty random. Like sometimes I have more in combat. Sometimes I have more in dexterity. It seems to be a bit randomized. Um, so it makes for some interesting startings. Maybe make a few save files and see which one has the better stats for you, which one uh, fits best for you. So let's go ahead and move along to the tips and tricks portion. Alrighty, for this portion of the game, or the video, sorry, not the game, I'm going to be using our Let's Play file to show you some things around, um, that way we don't get stopped by a bunch of nonsense. So, your first trick involves coming out of your farm. Nope, it's not that one. Come out of your farm, go down to this path, and there is a hidden area with a new spell. And I believe it's over here. Look at that. Hidden area, magical ability increased, and you learn Seed Praise. Check our spells here. Seed Praise, minor growing boost to affected seeds and saplings. So there you go. Let's head into town and move on to the next portion of the tips and tricks. Okay, our next tip has to do with the Wandering Shop. Saren Fate version. Saren Fate version, I guess. Instead of like, you know, Stardew Valley has its like wandering merchant. This is kind of the same situation here. So, um, <clears throat> this guy will appear and he will pause about right here at like 8.30ish. Talk to him and he's got a shop. He's got all sorts of stuff in here. Hats and dust and artifacts and gems and a mask and all sorts of goodies so but they're very expensive okay so let's move on to the next one the next tip is pretty simple this furnace is free to use it's sitting right in the town right outside the weapon shop I highly recommend using it to get started on your first smelting of ore and stone just to learn some new recipes totally free to use highly recommend it the next tip is wander around. All of these houses have some kind of secret. So this house, we just got a mana globe, which if you use it, increases your maximum mana. So this chest is in the house that looks like an egg, like this one here. So let's wander into this one and see what we find in here. Don't forget, interact with everything. See, chest here. One gold. Three gold. And another chest. And we got potions and more money. So, explore around the town. Go into each of the houses that you can. Some of them you won't be able to go into because you're not friendly enough with somebody or whatever. Um, but go into the ones that you can, open up all the chests, and get free loot. Because this is some pretty good loot. Some of it doesn't have loot, so keep that in mind. But the ones that don't have immediate loot, check around for secrets. Because you never know what you're going to find. I know one of these houses has the entrance to one of our next tips, though. So let's see if we can find that. So, um, pit stop on the way to our one of our major secrets 
Go inside the shop. Press E in front of these crates. Hop. Hop. And a chest with money and a mana globe. Three goodies. Thanks, shopkeeper. Let's find our secret. One of the secrets is right here. Past all of the houses. Go this way. All the way left. And you'll end up here. At a super spooky cemetery. When you try to go in, it says necromancers only. But... It's one of our secrets. Let's head on to the next one. The next one's going to be here in the weapon shop, similar to the regular shop. Hop up on top of these crates. Head down here to the left. And interact with this. A socketed obelisk. What could it be for? Clearly we were meant to put something in here. Not sure what yet, but keep an eye out. Okay, our other trick we're unable to get to currently, but it's in this house with the little, with this thing on it. Um, basically, in the top of this, there's supposed to be a, a chest puzzle for you to come, or a, a crate puzzle for you to complete to get to the goblin shop. Um, so whenever that unlocks, keep an eye out for that or just kind of wander around and see when you can get to it. Um, but that's where that's gonna be located whenever you have access to it. So, next one. Our next couple tips involve going south from town. Um, the first one is gonna be, oop, wrong way. Down this way, down this little corner here, is a free sawmill for you to use. Planks are a great way of getting money early game. So just access this, chuck a bunch of timber in here and let it run it runs automatically you don't have to stand here and wait you can wander off and do your own thing so while that's working let's go to the next one our next tip is continuing on the path we were just at keep going right and you'll end up here and on the ground here you'll find this thing a shovel good for digging so we haven't found a use for it yet but Key items can be used anywhere. So wander around, use it wherever you think you can. Maybe you'll unlock something cool. So moving on to the next one. All right, our next tips are gonna be right here in the forest. There's a little dude. So anytime you're at a cliff face and you see a little hole like this, it'll sparkle interact with it and secrets happen so this lets us get a juju globe as you can see they're really tiny juju globe increases your max hp a mysterious bush i thought we could knock it down let's move on to the next one <clears throat> the next one is these little patches of grass you see here, press E. And you'll be able to move up and down. I got myself into a battle here. Did not mean to do that. Wowza. We just earned a thousand gold, or one gold I mean. So sometimes that happens when you just kill stuff you just like get a ton of money on the ground. I don't know what the requirement for that is, but <laughs> I guess that's a secret is that sometimes just just kill a bunch of stuff and surprising things will happen. So let's go down here. There's another one of these whole things which you've already activated and you open up this chest and you get, we don't have it on us, but you get a copper helmet. Um, a copper helmet is a pretty good starting item. Um, right now we have the pumpkin helmet thing that we found by breaking pumpkins, because you can break pumpkins that are sitting around too. So, um, I wonder if it'll let me break these to show you. Nope, it will not. Okay, 
Um, also, you can jump over this rock, go to the left, and then you're in here. Easy save right here. And there's a fun little puzzle to complete. Not sure how to do it. I'm not sure what the activation requirements are. There's some creepy dude standing over there just like staring you down. Uh, but this is definitely something that will become useful in the future. But more importantly, the save file right here in the forest. Let's see if we've got any more tricks for, oh, jump back over the log here, pressing E. Okie dokie. Another handy tip is to the left where we saw this merchant earlier. He's still on his way over here. You go up this little path and this is the mine. Feed this stone mana. I don't know why, but it's another tip and trick. Just honestly, wander around, explore. If I'm being honest with you, I know it's probably obvious, but I'm literally wandering around, interacting with everything I possibly can and finding all of these tips and tricks. So it's super easy to find out where these are, what they do. Um, the mines are really helpful because it's an easy way to get copper and resources. And let's see if we've got any more stuff over here. Looks like that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I know it was a long one. I know at the end there it was kind of discombobulated, but there's some very helpful tips and tricks there for you. Very helpful starting guide so that you know how to get started, what the options are. That way you make the right choice for you and your game file and some easy tips and tricks for you to get started and have a nice big boost at the beginning. If you have any comments for me, maybe I left something out, maybe I was incorrect about something, maybe you have a tip or trick that I didn't include in this video, put it down in the comment section below. I make sure to respond to all the comments that I receive. Um, hold on, this beeping is getting annoying. Like super annoying. Fantastic. Anywho, so I read all the comments that I receive. Don't forget, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Uh, it's totally free to you. I'm really trying to grow this channel. We're going to be doing all sorts of content on here. Stardew Valley, Saren Fate, Monster Hunter Stories, Pokemon. Oh, we're going to do all sorts of stuff. And if you guys have any suggestions for what you want to see on the channel, go ahead and put that, that down in the comment section too. Um, I am open to ideas. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see ya. Bye.